and joint production. Their contribution will focus on the production and distribution of comics, on the founding concept between comics and literature, and on the overlapping and integration in topics of social, political, contemporary issues and debates. I will suggest to listen to their presentation and to have a Q&A at the end of the event. At this point, I would like to invite and to introduce Sarah. Sara is a PhD candidate in Italian studies with a focus on Italian comics and holds a minor in art history. Her research explores the phenomenon of author comics in Italy and situates itself at the crossroad between cultural studies, media studies, and art history. She is also interested in the circulation and reception of comics products in the pre internet era and the, in the digital age. So, welcome, Sara. Um, so, um, thank you for uh, Carlotta and Valentina for the introduction. Um, so, when I sent the abstract for this panel, I interpreted the alternative gaze of the title in a somewhat peculiar fashion. In approaching the study of the current practices in the production and distribution of comics in Italy, a rather marginalized sector, in fact, I clashed against the lack of scientific research on the subject, which forced me to undertake an alternative process, an alternative gaze made of partial elaborations that, instead of giving absolute results, manifest the complexity and the poignancy of the Italian comics industry. The point of departure of this study is the exploration of the comics formats available in the Italian market, such as the graphic novel and the serial comic book, and the consequent aesthetic and commercial aspirations they mirror. In principle, this distinction that does not appear particularly hard to make. A graphic novel, for example, is a self-concluded comic, usually created by a recognizable authorial figure. A serial comic is a comic book that focuses on a single character and presents an extended storyline, with or without continuity. This format, then, identifies sets of distribution channels, the physical or online bookstore, and the newsstands, uh, which in turn lead to two topologies of users the um, casual to interested readers who are attracted by authorial works and high quality expensive packaging, and loyal readers who commit to weekly or monthly issues that are cheaper in terms of price and editorial quality. Halfway between the bookstore and the newsstand, we can place direct stores, or fumetterie, where specialized and loyal readers can find both graphic novels and serial comic books, new and back issues. In addition to the graphic novel and the serial comic book formats, we can find the fumetto collaterale, which is sold as a supplement to newspapers and periodicals, but generally has a high-quality bookstore-like kind of packaging. And the webcomics, which is produced to be distributed and consumed online through blogs and social networks. Eventually, however, the Italian comics industry is much more complex than it might appear from this simplified diagram. Um, the term um, from the so the boundaries between the formats have become more blurred, and even defining what is what seems harder than it looks. Take the term graphic novel, for example. Is it a format, a genre, a medium? Is it comics? It is not comics, Calabres and Zagaya would say in their 2017 essay, Che Cos'è il Graphic Novel, one of the most recent on the topic. The two scholars state that graphic novels, despite adopting the, and I quote, tecniche caricaturali dei fumetti sono in grado di superare i fumetti tradizionali in profondità e sottigliezza. And, 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 well, serial comics present, and I quote, una logica narrativa sequenziale e puramente monodirezionale. And quote. According to the Committee of Premio Strega, the most prestigious Italian literary award, graphic novels are libri di narrativa, as the nomination of GP in 2014 and Zero Calcare in 2015 would support. At the same time, Zero Calcare himself argues that when they ask him what he does, he always answers, faccio fumetto. Uh, Chris Murray, media studies uh, professor at the University of Dundee, offers the most convincing definition, to my knowledge, of a uh, graphic novel as a type of text combining words and images, essentially a comic, although the term graphic novel most commonly refers to a complete story presented as a book rather than a periodical, end quote. Graphic novel, then, should be intended as a category identifying not the quality of the content and narration, but rather as a, and I quote Tosti, diramazione merceologica, editoriale e cartotecnica del fumetto. Graphic novels are commercialized as novels and sold in bookstores, 
realized by their authors and promoted by publishers in a way that recalls novels and are packaged as single, self-concluded volumes. Besides their mythological issues and biased discourses, it is undeniable that the label graphic novel has helped popularize the medium of comics within a hyper-cultural environment. Even more importantly, since the late 1990s, the graphic novel has absorbed all those readers that once favored the graphic and narrative complexity and the condensed form of auteur comics, but then became disaffected with the periodical format of auteur comics magazine. And in this slide, you can see how many new comic publishers were born in the wake of the success of the graphic novel. And we have some publishers that are specifically of graphic novels, like O'Connell Press, like Bow Publishing, uh, but there are many more that are uh, involved with other formats, American comics, manga, re-edition of classics, graphic journalism, literary adaptation. So really, uh, the graphic novel spurred um, a great interest, at least in specialized uh, publishers. Um, so in this sense, the dynamics of distribution channels has shifted to, with a substantial movement away from the newsstand toward the bookstore. In truth, the newsstand has always been the privileged distribution channel of comics and still nowadays sells 12 to 15 times the number of copies sold by bookstore, according to Stefanelli. But the widespread crisis of the newsstand as a whole can no longer be disregarded. Um, according to uh, Reportage Barizzo from La Repubblica, in 2001 we had 36,000 kiosks, um, while in 2018 we have 15,000 kiosks. And we passed from 41,000 stores, not six uh, stores, uh, to 27,000. So the negative trend affecting newsstand products is also affecting Italian most important and long-running publishing house of serial comics, Sergio Bonelli, which is adopting a series of editorial strategies to survive the seemingly inexorable crisis. In the mid-2000s, uh, in fact, uh, SBN, Sergio Bonelli Editore, which had many successful titles running for years and decades, like text since 1948, for example, began experimenting with newer formats, such as the mini-series. Now, the mini-series are composed of between 12 to 24 issues and are created by recognizable authors with his modelli, and uh, they present a different genre. So if you look at the names, these are uh, names very popular in the Bonel team, Ambrosini, Manfredi, Enoch, uh, Medda, uh, Chiaverotti, Pilotta, and several genres like sci-fi, fantasy, action, detective fiction, crime. Um, and um, so the idea was that of providing readers with a circumscribed character whose narrative arc could have a clearly defined ending. And these are uh, three of the most popular, like Lilith, uh, Mercurio Loi, and I will talk a little more about Mercurio Loi um, later. Um, following in the same editorial path, in 2007, SBA launched I, Fuma, I Romanzi a Fumetti, traditional Bonelli format, so 16.3 by 8.3 inches, black and white, but with three times the usual number of pages. Here we have um, 300 pages. The first title to inaugurate the series was Dragonero, a fantasy created by Luca Enoch and Stefano Vietti, which was so successful as to generate the regular series, various hardcover album format re-editions, fantasy novel, and a comic prequel, Sensanima. And here you can see three different formats of the same work. So we have the Dragonero, the, the romanzo, the novel, um, otto euro, uh, eight euros, then we have the issue, the single issue of the regular series, um, three euros. Um, and then you have the uh, deluxe, uh, the hardcover edition, and you can see it in the last image. It's a, it's a different kind of feeling, of course. Of course. Um, if the miniseries and the romanzi a fumetti engage with long but delimited narrations, in 2012, SBA Anna, um, inaugurated the series Le Storie, in which every issue is a self-concluded story of 110 pages and of various genres. Beside offering yet another format to Bonelli's readers, Le Storie acts as an equo bono, palestra nella quale testare scenari e personaggi. And in fact, I did not put it here, but Mercurio Loi uh, was first tested as Le Storie, so it appears as the protagonist of one single story, 
and then it was so popular that uh, that he got his, his own series. Uh, and that happened in 2015. And then again here, the story is, is a sort of container where everything that is hard to define can be put, like monolith, uh, this, this project of Alfredione Um So accounting for SBA, uh, SBA's initiatives in the last few years is not an easy task as the publisher is constantly renewing, not only in terms of editorial offerings, but also through multimedia projects, among which motion comics, live action, movies, animated series, aimed at creating a true Bonelli cinematic universe in the next year. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot, I forgot a, a uh, Before the cinematic universe, I had to add this. Um, that um, I've talked about recent production and the cinematic universe is still very recent. But um, as far as, um, let's say, uh, the signature characters, such as Tex and, and, and company, despite experiencing a drop in, in readership, still represent the backbone of SBA sales. In this sense, a particularly successful segment is represented by the Collaterali series generally represent a reprint of whole seasons or selection of most popular issues sold as supplements to national newspapers like La Gazzetta, El Corriere, La Repubblica. Collaterali could be considered a sort of link between serial comic books and graphic novels uh, in that they are sold through the newsstand channel but generally present better material quality. And here are two examples from La Gazzetta, Tex, is in 70 years of Tex, and it's the whole collection and then uh, this last one is from July 2020, uh, July 2019, and it's a selection of the best stories of, of Dylan Dog. And as you can see, the volume is different from the single issue. Now, to go back to the cinematic universe, um, I just wanted to show you, this is just a curiosity. Um, this is, um, and you cannot hear the sound, but uh, this is a trailer of Dampier, uh, which is a series, uh, one of the... 2000 series, um, and you can see some of the graphic aspects. And they just finished um, recording um, oh, girare, uh, the the movie in Romania, and it will be released probably at the end of um, 2020 or at the beginning of 2021. So uh, they're really trying to create something different and something that in America is already present, but in Italy. Uh, was never heard of. So um, the graphic novel format changed as well as pushing forward the comics industry in Italy. It also eased the access of comics to editorial and market analysis. And even so, data on production, distribution, and reception of comics in Italy is still lacking. While, for example, comics sold through the bookstore channel make it into the annual report of the AIE, the Associazione Italiana Editori, um, data about newsstand production in terms of titles, print runs, tirature, copies sold, revenue, are known only by the publishers themselves, which, however, avoid disclosing them, considering the negative trend of these last years. Now, in the remaining time, I would like to share with you some outcomes of my study on the comics industry in Italy, which, as I said at the beginning, cannot be based on exact numbers, but can still approach the reality of things to a good degree of approximation. Um, so, I would start with uh, publishers, and according to Informazioni Editoriali, uh, which is the agency in charge of the database collecting all titles with ESPN, so everything that is sold through bookstores, um, as of July 2019, the number of publish publishers with at least one identifiable um, title identifiable as comic, paper, or ebook are 1,053 publishers. Um, and out of, so they represent the 6.7% of the total publishers that we have in Italy. Uh, now, of these, 59 have more than 50 comics in their catalog. And of these 50, 40 have more than 80% of their catalog devoted to comics. So we can say that for basically, um, we have 40 uh, comics, comics publishers that they represent a 0.25% of the total number of publishers in Italy. And in terms of vitality of comics, uh, Informazione Editoriale reports that out of 
5,500 publishers with at least one new publication, una novita, in 2018, uh, 248 published at least one new comic. So this means that 10.9% of publishers with novita, with new things, um, are not necessarily consistent in publishing comics, but at least attentive to the medium. Now, the, when we move to titles and print run, tiratura, uh, the situation doesn't get easier, actually, it gets way more difficult. Uh, while comics sold through the bookstore channel, as I said, get monitored by various agencies, newsstand sales can be tracked by a certamente di fusion stampa only if publishers themselves request their service. Uh, titles marketed uh, in Fumeteria only for the Fumeteria are completely off the radar. So um, a, a good starting point for the number of titles and print run through the bookstore channel is the AIE um, annual report compiled by um, Giovanni Pereston and Antonio Lolli, which offers a comprehensive account of the book market in Italy and often provides comparison with past years. The fault of the report, however, is that AIE relies on external agencies, informa, um, uh, Informazioni Editoriali, Istat, Nielsen, for data, for data collection, which generates discrepancies in the parameters adopted. And this is the reason why I decided to confront the reports of several agencies in the hope of providing a more thorough presentation of the market. So I also checked the Istat annual report, which has titles and print run, uh, it's very vague about the category Fumetti. We don't really know what they intend for Fumetti. And there are huge discrepancies with the report by the Association Italiana Editori. But it has historical theories. So it, we can look back uh, in time and see what happens. Um, I had a private communication with Informazione Editoriali, and they gave me the total catalog and new production, the paper and ebook, but there's no track of print run, so no idea about the tiratura. Um, I also checked the EBS catalog, uh, which has the total catalog and new production available for uh, purchase. But of course, the fault is that it's just one individual bookstore. And then um, this is a recent this is a recent study by scholar Matteo Stefanelli at the Comic Con, which gives us an idea of the 2018 production of the first 25 publishers, all distribution channel, which is very important. But there's no historical data. So starting from the annual IE report, I won't bore you with too many details, but um, I would like to um, notice this, that um, the, in 2018, 14.3% of titles of fictions are graphic novels. Um, and we had an increase of plus 21% of titles from 2017. So uh, the graphic novel increased of a plus 21, but the whole sector of fiction increased of only 6%. So the graphic novel is one of the sector in the, in the fiction that is going better, basically. Um, and it's, we can also notice that after 2014, the sector in the red has constantly increased. And this trend is possibly connected to the visibility and popularity brought to the format by the nomination of GP and Zero Calcare uh, to the Strega Award in 2014-2015. If we move to the ISTAT, the ISTAT reports uh, are useful because they offer, as I said, serie storiche, so historical data that can be compared because they actually have the same parameters, while the reports by Associazione Italiana Editori from 2012 changed their data collection so everything that happened before 2012 cannot be compared with what happened after. It's just different parameters. Um, so in this, um, in here we can see that according to ESET, uh, titles of graphic novel increased of 11.7% from 2017, but of a plus 71% from 2012. Um, and the print run, so the tirature, uh, increased 7% from 2017, and a plus 51% from 2012. So again, the graphic novel is increasing, is growing, and especially in this last, um, in, in this last decade. Uh, skip this. Um, this is the catalog by Informazione Editoriali, which was really useful. I was able to find out that 
2.1% of total um, of, of uh, the total books published are um, graphic novels. And um, of these, 86.5% are paper, and 13.5% um, are ebooks. And the ebooks um, is, is actually growing. Um, it's growing a lot. Let me keep this because I'm running out of time. Um, this is the distribution of titles based on the first publishers, on the first 25 uh, publishers. And um, I, I thought that it was very important to show you who we are talking about. So the most important publishers of comics, and not only graphic novel, in Italy is Panini Comics, um, which is the, mm, the mm, publisher of Planet Manga, Marvel, Disney comic books, and as recently as January this year of DC. Um, so Panini Comics is really the giant in the comics industry in Italy. Um, Rue edition follows with a wide variety, um, with a wide and varied offering of U.S. comics with Lion, uh, the, the um, uh, Marchio Goen is for manga and the Marchio Lina Chiara is for Franco-Belgian. So they have 18% of the share um, in here. While publishers of graphic novel have less than six times the catalog of Panini, um, if Panini publishes uh, 5,500 comics, um, Bao Publishing has 700, uh, 700 Mondadori 500, Fogonino Press 400, so they represent basically a 1% of, these, uh, of the entire total. Finally, Sergio Bonelli Editore seems to have published only 357 titles in more than 70 years, but the reason is that they have started publishing their own bookstore materials under their name, Bonelli, only since 2014 before other publishers, such as Mondadori, Bao, and Rizzoli, would take care of the bookstore channel. So, in sum, even though there's a general push toward reducing the whole medium of comics with the graphic novel format, the truth is that the ruler of Italian comics market is the important manga and U.S. comics, often bought by those lettori forti, leaders that are committed to weekly and monthly publications that are strong, strongly intertwined with continuity and multiverses. And to finish, I wanted to show you the results of Matteo Stefanelli's um, study. And according to Stefanelli, so they considered everything that was published through fumetterie, um, uh, newsstand, and bookstores. And they went through distributors that are so hard to get a hold of. I tried, but I was not successful. Um, they found out that 30.7% per, uh, of the total titles published in 2018 are by Pan uh, Panini Comics. Everyone else follows with under 8%. Rue, for example, has an 8% um, of total titles. The graphic novels, the graphic novel publishers have 1.1% 1 .1 of the total titles. And very important here, finally, we have a number of how much is sold through the newsstand. For example, RCS sold only through newsstands because it's a, with a collaterali, with La Repubblica, and J, uh, sorry, RCS Corriere della Sera and J di La Repubblica. And RCS has 7.5% of the total titles, uh, which is a, a huge share. So, uh, for today, I will stop here, um, but in the article I'm soon uh, submitting for publication, I also consider the market, identifying distribution channels and revenue, even harder. Um, and I'm aware that there would be a lot more to say, for example, about the webcomics format, but my goal for today was to start a conversation around such a complex and, and fundamental topic, and I hope to receive your feedback. Thank you.